I'm turning to you. Actually, I'm seeing you here too, Jean-Claude. So maybe we can have a highlight on what is happening in the United States and uh, where, where the debate is going right now. The floor is yours. Good morning, good evening. Hope you can hear me well. I wish I could be with you. Unfortunately, okay. when I was about to board my flight, I had a slight health issue to deal with. And unfortunately, I couldn't board the flight. And I miss so much being with you and networking with many of you who are long-term friends. My apologies. I will try to cover in a few minutes uh, what you, I guess, expecting me to talk about, uh, which is the US presidential election and I would say more generally the election in November 2024, both from the domestic standpoint, but also from the point of geopolitical environment. Uh, you know what's happening in uh, November 2024, which is almost exactly a year from today. The president will be elected for four years. The House of Representatives will be elected for two years. And in the Senate, 33 senators, which is about one third, will be elected for a period of six years. Let's deal with uh, the Senate and the uh, House of Representatives. Uh, 20 Democrats and three independents that normally caucus with Democrats are standing for re-election. Some of them are not standing for re-election, but say those are the seats. And then uh, 10 Republicans. Uh, so the total of 33. The forecast at the moment is that 14 are solid Democrat, one is leading Democrat, five are leaning likely Democrat, and three so-called toss-up, where the result will depend on the day of the election. And the Republicans are almost all likely to be re-elected. Uh, there could be a change of majority in the Senate, but right now, as you know, there is a majority of Democratic senators 51 to 9, and there is the casting vote of the vice president. So the Senate could be changing majority. It will largely depend on what I call the coattail effect of the presidential election. The House of Representatives, 435 members, 221 Republican, 212 Democrats. That since the last midterm election in November, exactly a year ago, and two seats are vacant. My prediction is that after the zoo that we've seen for the election of the speaker, it's very unlikely that the Republican will be able to uh, keep the majority in the House and uh, the House could again become democratic by a slight majority. So we are now in the period where each party and as you know, there, there may be several candidates, but at the end of the day, the two parties, the United States, Democrat and Republican, and we are at a time where each of them is choosing their own <clears throat> candidate for next year's election. The president, this is the tradition, whether it's Republican or Democrat, a president with what we call an incumbent is likely to stand without being challenged for re-election. Yet, Joe Biden is facing some opposition for a variety of reasons within his own party. First of all, his age. If he's elected in November next year, he will uh, assume his function at the beginning of 2025, and he will be 82 years old. And when he finishes his mandate, he will be 86. He will be the oldest president in the history of the United States. He's also facing other issues. He's facing issues of his vice president, Kamala Harris, who's never been convincing and who's not liked and respected even by his own, by our own party, the Democratic Party. She's never been able to impress. And as you know, I mean, if something happens to the president, Kamala Harris immediately steps in and becomes the next president. Americans, starting with the majority of Democrats, are very uncomfortable with that. And then he has issues with his son and the business, I would say, business activities of his family. Uh, so it, the matter is, it, it's quite simple. The people know that he will be, unless something happens to him between now and the election, he will be the candidate for the Democratic Party. Yet this is not the candidate that the Democratic Party would like to have. Biden was elected in 
2020, largely because he was the alternative to uh, Bernie Sanders that pe people find too left in and therefore, uh, and he didn't really campaign and he was lucky to face Trump who had a lot of issues. So uh, he was elected this time, it's gonna be much tougher. So people are not convinced that by the candidate to uh, face Trump, assuming Trump is the nominee of the Republican Party. Now let's switch to the Republican Party. Uh, same story on the Republican Party. Trump is leading in the polls, but effectively only 40% of the people who well, are at the primaries, and I, I remind you at the primary, only vote the people who are as Republican or Democrat. So if you you can vote at the Democratic primary. If you're Republican, you can Republican primary. But those who are independent, and most of the, the majority of Americans are neither Republican nor Democrat. They are registered as independent. Trump only gets 40% or less of Republican voters. 60% don't want Trump. Now, the problem is that they don't agree with my relative to Trump. So Trump is, like Biden, not the candidate of the party as it stands now, at, at least the majority of the Republican voters. For a variety of, first of all, his personality. I mean, some people and quite a few people don't like his personality, his style, uh, his attitude, and so on and so forth. Then he has a lot of legal issues to deal with. I mean, personal issues, you know, sexual assault, but also he took some classified document when he had function and brought them to his, his in Florida and really stopped and didn't dare and lie about it. Then he reached the election. Then there was this uh, famous January 6, 21, when there was an assault on the Capitol, which shocked a lot of people in the world, but shocked a lot of people as well. So, uh, and I can go on and on and and Trump essentially is perceived as an egoistic person. He has done a number of things when he was president because he, he, he followed some of his advisors, some advisors who were better than some others. But net net, people don't feel that Trump, who is also not so much younger, I mean, maybe a couple of years later than Biden, is the, is the American would like to have as the next president. So, so what could be the outcome? You know. My view is that it's going to be Trump by then, certain. So, uh, as I said, could have health issues and other issues between now and the election and be replaced by a governor, not, not this for sure. And Trump is facing challenges. And although he leads in the polls, he leads in Iowa, he leads in New Hampshire, he leads also in South Carolina. Two alternatives are waiting in the wings. Run out Florida, run. Personally, uh, Ron DeSantis won his election during uh, the election of 2020. I don't think that, uh, I mean, it was a very significant, but he's done a number of missteps since he was reelected, and his campaign is not going well. So uh, he is relatively strong be that with Trump, now I see him sort of gradually fading away. So the star in the party is uh, Governor Nikki Haley, former governor of South Africa, who was also ambassador to the United Nations, originally a family from India, a Sikh family from India, and she they came to the United States. She was a locally in South Carolina, had a sort of one and a half term as governor of the state and was appointed by the ambassador to the UN. She did an effective job, what I would call the Reganian part of the party, the traditional Republican who are strong on foreign policy, free market and limited government. So I would say a traditional, she was loyal to Trump when she was doing her job for the United at the same time, she was able to take positions that are less rigid and less conservative than some other Republican, particularly on the critical in the United States, 
with women's rights, including right to abortion. As so, you know, the majority of American people are in favor of abortion, not any abortion, not for an extended period of time, but the majority of Americans are in favor of abortion. It so happens that the majority of the Republican Party is so-called life, and okay. this is conflicting with the view of the majority. Thank you. So, that, that was the first round. I I for, you were very long already, and we're going to come back with more questions. So if you don't mind hanging up with us for a little while longer, just to answer questions later of on. Course, of because course. Because <laughs> we need, we need time course. for everybody here. So now we have the basics, Biden on one side, Trump the other, Nikki Haley's climbing up. Some of you have some hopes for her, but we're not sure. But there are a lot of things to talk about, and especially how geopolitics are getting into this, uh, this election, which never happens. And I know you're keen to talk about this a little later, but it's going to be...